Ruby Month has officially begun, my friends. Well, at least it began a little while ago. This, this video just took a really long time to make. Everybody out there in YouTube land, Jake on the One Man Band is back again, and welcome to another Ruby Theory. Now, a couple weeks ago, I sent out a post to all you guys asking what type of review would you like to see? Would you like to see a review about Cinder or about Raven first? And so you guys voted. And it was neck and neck for a while, but then Cinder pulled ahead. By about half. She want, She almost had like twice as many votes as Raven. So, you're gonna be getting a Cinder Theory right now. And it's a rather long one. Rather, really complex, kinda out there. But I hope that I can at least make a little bit of sense of it. So, to start out with this theory, I need to go back to where it originally originated. At first I was gonna do a theory about what Cinder's semblance was. And I did research upon research, did all these little things, tried to come up with something, but I couldn't come up with really anything concrete. And so I kind of abandoned the idea, which is actually pretty good, because Murder of Birds over on his channel is going to be doing a theory about Cinder's semblance. So I'm going to let him have that. Once the video comes out, there's going to be a link in the description down below to take you to it. I suggest you go watch it because Murder of Birds is an awesome guy. So, with Cinder's semblance out the window, what was I gonna talk about? What is so articulate about Cinder that it warrants a theory? And that's when it hit me. Upon researching her semblance, I started to come up with other questions. Why is she so skilled? How is she so skilled? How does she know so much about things that people aren't supposed to know about? One question led to another, and it birthed the theory of what is Cinder. So, Cinder exists in the world of Ruby to be pretty much our main antagonist for now. She wanted to be strong, she wanted to be powerful, and she wanted to be feared. Now, those are the big three things that we need to remember about Cinder. She stated that at in episode 7 of volume 3 at the very beginning. But it makes you wonder. She wanted these things, but how did someone as skilled as her go throughout the world of Remnant without being noticed, without having any form of record on her? We can deduce that Cinder is not a huntsman. If she was a huntsman, there would be some form of record about her, a record about what kind of weapon she uses, what what does she look like, what does she wear, what her abilities are. And you would think that the police or the huntsmen themselves would be able to discern who Amber's assailant was and who was seen in the CCT from this information. you think that they would be able to form some form of identity for her if they had that on record. So she can't be a huntsman, but she can't also be any form of major criminal. Because once again, there would be record of her. She would have a record and she would be known both by the police and the huntsman if things started to go way above just petty crimes, the Huntsman would probably come in and start investigating for themselves. And another thing was brought up. At the end of Volume 3, where Cinder finally confronts Ozpin, she does not know him personally. By the way she talks, she says that... She was right about you. Such arrogance. He, ha he has such arrogance about her, and that she was right about him. She probably meaning Salem, but Cinder did not know Ozpin directly. So the theories about Cinder being some form of Ozpin's protege is kind of thrown out the window. 
because he would know who she is. He would be able to f find her at his school. I know that she probably hid well and did all that stuff, but you would think that there would be a record of her somewhere. As in, she's gonna take part in the tournament, so this is her name, an alias, I would think, and her face, and where she's from. And he would probably go through that information and see, oh, oh, well, that's, that's my protege that went rogue. Send in the Huntsman to arrest her! So not only does she not know Ozpin, but she still has some sort of beef with Ozpin and Ironwood. Mostly Ironwood, but I'll get to that later. So, where does that really leave us? Now, this kind of led me into two different roads. One of the roads being, well, maybe she was just a no-one urchin. What if she grew up on the streets, a lot like Emerald did? Cinder may have just been born pretty much a nobody and was dealt a bad hand. She wasn't able to go to any good schooling or anything like that, and she pretty much had to fight to survive. And I know that people outside the kingdoms have to fight to survive on a daily basis, but with the amount of skill that Cinder shows, I don't believe that she came from outside the kingdoms. If Cinder grew up an urchin, she really would have no natural talents. So what would point her in the direction to s seek out Salem? Why would Salem seek out her? How would Cinder have been able to come up with a fighting style w with ha that has sheer ferocity, speed, skill, skill with not one blade, but two and a bow. Also, if she was an urchin, how would she know so much about the military and about computers and about getting a virus that can infect any computer system it gets into? She's also a very talented speaker and manipulator. She's able to deliver that speech at the end of PvP that just sends people screaming and she's able to manipulate both Adam and Roman into her ranks pretty much against their own will. And we still have to remember that Monty pretty much stated that she's in her, you know, mid 20s, early 20s. That's what she looks like. Like he pretty much said that because she looks young, but she doesn't look old. So like where in the adult range does she, does she fit? So she looks like a 20 something year old. How does someone this young get this skilled and this powerful in such a short amount of time without having any form of record on anything and being completely anonymous to the world. How? That's the big question that kept popping up in my mind is how. Until I came up with the solution, no one could. At least, no human could. This is where the theory gets a little bit crazy, my friends. But suspend your disbelief, if you will. I'm about to ask you a question. What if Cinder was an android like Penny? What if Cinder was part of the experimentation of implanting souls into robotic bodies? Now, Penny did indeed state that she was the first robot to be implanted with a human soul. But let's break that down. She was created, I'm gonna say very recently. She was created probably in the last few years. Now, would she have known that there were other experiments going on? Maybe not. But would she know about previous failures? Would the scientists have brought up previous failures to her? What if Penny was the first successful implantation of a soul into a robot body? Cinder could have been one of the first near successes, as in the scientists were successfully able to implant an android body with a human soul. Now think about this, my friends. Look at Cinder. Look how almost perfect her anatomy is. How she is both perfect size and perfect height for being a soldier. She doesn't seem to have any amplified proportions in any way that animes normally have. She doesn't seem to have a, a giant rack or a, a huge butt. Well, 
you know, besides that one scene in Volume 2, but, but that's beside the point. The thing is, Cinder is built in the form of a expert soldier, a good espionage agent as well. She has the built of a soldier, but still has the female curves if she needed to be some form of spy or espionage soldier. She, she's pretty much the perfect package for the perfect soldier slash spy. And I think that's what the military was going for. They wanted to make the perfect soldier with Cinder. But once she was created, Cinder may have been a little too self-conscious, a little bit rebellious, if you will. I'm guessing that she had either a young adult or a full adult soul put into the robot bot body. So she had already established herself as an identity and she didn't feel like it was right to be used and manipulated by these military goons. This would explain why Penny was created as a child. Because a child is easier to imprint on, easier to mold into the kind of person you want to be you want them to become. You can't really do that with a adult unless you get into full-blown brainwashing. So although the scientist had created this being that was meant to be the perfect soldier, she, was, she wasn't controllable. They couldn't control her. And so they decided to get rid of her. Now, all of this would have had to happen without Ironwood knowing. And although we know Ironwood was part of these experiments, they probably wouldn't tell him that one went rogue in fear that they might, you know, be fired or something. Or who knows, maybe she was created in a secret laboratory and she killed all the scientists that were working on her. But I believe that she heard Ironwood's name in conversation during the times which she was being experimented on. Because if you take notice of all the actions she does in Volume 3, most of them are directed at Ironwood and his military. Of course, it, of course it all takes place at Beacon and she is trying to obtain the rest of the Fall Maiden's power, but I'll get to that reason in a little bit. Besides that, it's Ironwood's military that takes the most hits. It's his robot creations that are turned against him. It is his airships that are destroyed. And it's his soldiers that are shown on recording to be firing on citizens of Vale. So Ironwood is framed as a monster as well as being targeted by his own creations. Cinder was going after Ironwood, and that's where I think the whole concept of her wanting to be feared came from. She wanted Ironwood to fear her, to fear this creation that he was trying to conceive and bring into the world. Now, upon escaping from her facility and the scientists that were experimenting on her, I think during this time she somehow came across Salem and Salem saw her for what she was. She was this new entity, someone who, although looked human, wasn't human, and had a resentment towards humanity. And that's why I think Salem took Cinder under her wing. She saw something in Cinder that maybe she saw in herself once. And so Salem and Cinder joined forces. Cinder was going to get her revenge on Ironwood, while Salem was going to get her revenge on Ozpin. And that's where the line at the end of Volume 3 came from, where Cinder talks about how she was right about you. Such arrogance. Salem was right about Ozpin. And so with one fell swoop, they devised a plan that would both bring Ironwood and Ozpin down. 
and due to what she is, she's obviously not going to tell anyone about it. She doesn't tell either Mercury or Emerald that she's an android. She keeps that to herself, and that is a secret only shared between her and Salem. And a little while ago, there was a theory posted on Team Theory that talked about maybe the military in Ironwood were trying to fuse souls to robots, that way they can keep the maidens in check. If you think about it, every time a maiden died, their powers would go to another person, and then the Brotherhood of the Seasonal Maidens would have to waste energy and time finding the next maiden. So what if you took the soul of a maiden and put it in a robot body, a body that wouldn't age and wouldn't die, and then you just kept them safe forever? The power would never exchange, it never exchange persons, and it would always be in check. And maybe that's another thing that Cinder was created for. Remember when Cinder talked to Pyrrha right before she killed her? She said, It's unfortunate you were promised a power that was never truly yours. To which Pyrrha replied, Do you believe in destiny? And then Cinder replied, Yes. Maybe it was Cinder's destiny as the military android to, at some point, gain the power of the Fall Maiden. Now, I know a lot of you people are going to be thinking that this theory is way too out there and way crazy, but if we break it down with a few facts, it does kind of make a lot of sense. If she was an android that a soul was put into, then she would know that her trying to steal the powers of a maiden could possibly work because she herself was an experiment of the same exact thing. She was an empty robot husk that was implanted with a human soul. So she would obviously be able to take on another, at least portion of a soul to gain the power. She's also an expert fighter. If you see how she fights both with her blades, her bow, and with the maiden powers, you can tell that she is able to learn fast and adapt fast. She has access to a computer virus that can infect any device that gets connected to it. And how did she pro how did she come across this? Maybe she programmed it herself. If she was being trained to be the perfect soldier, she would be trained in computers and maybe generating a virus of this nature. She also knows sensitive information about things. She knew that the Grim Dragon was buried under the under Mountain Glen, and she also had a lot of information about military tech, especially the Paladin mech suits. I mean, how did the White Fang and Roman find out about those? Cinder told them, because she learned about them during her time with the military. They were probably in very, like, pre-developmental stage, but they were just starting, and she was probably able to hack into the military's database in order to get the information. With the assistance of the Maiden Powers, she was able to snap Pyrrha's sword. Now, that sword was made out of metal, and I don't care how amplified your strength is through Maiden Powers or Aura, snapping a sword in two places like that would take a lot more force than can be generated by any human. And they weren't completely melted through. They were started to get melted through, and then were snapped. They weren't melted through. They were snapped. So if she had robotic limbs, it would make a little bit of sense. And finally, think about when Cinder came across Penny's blueprints. She wasn't all that surprised. She saw them and was like, oh, this is interesting. Maybe she was thinking they tried to create another me, and it's here. We're gonna implement this into our plans. And she wasn't like, this This is pretty crazy. She, in, she saw it and instantly started to generate a plan on how to use it, how to turn it against Ironwood, and to destroy it so that she was the only one. This can also semi be connected to her inspiration being Cinderella. Think about it. Cinder was created into the world 
and was put in an unfair position. She was being used and manipulated by the military and by her creators, trying to create her into being something she didn't want to be. A lot like how Cinderella had her evil stepmother and evil stepsisters torturing her all day. But Cinder was eventually discovered by Salem, a person in power who granted her with further power and helped her achieve what she wanted to do. In Cinderella, her fairy godmother appears and allows Cinderella to go to the ball in order to get her prince. The more I delved into this theory, the more I saw connections that made it seem like it could possibly be true. And. Here's another thing, Cinder has been seen to have glowing eyes, and I know that this is from the Maiden's powers, but throughout the series she has had glowing eyes, and especially when she started to siphon the power out of Amber, one, her, one of her eyes started to glow and flame. And where have we seen glowing eyes, and especially one eye glowing in particular? The Terminator. A man that is actually a machine created to destroy. But hey, those are just my thoughts. And the real question is, what do you guys think? Hey, hey everybody. Thanks again for watching the video. Be sure if you liked, leave a like and favorite down below. And hey, subscribe if you feel inclined to. Feel free to leave a comment down below if you feel that you agree with this theory or if you have a varying opinion. Be sure to check out these other videos up here that are on the screen and there'll be other links down below taking you to my various social media pages as well as my patreon page big thanks to all my patreon sponsors you guys are awesome love you you're amazing so be sure to like and favorite if you've enjoyed subscribe of course if you feel inclined to i'll see you guys next time i'm out there in youtube land be a good person tip your waitresses keep moving forward i'll see you then yeah, yo! <laughs>